Are you asking the management teams in your portfolio the questions that really matter? Are you able to discern fact from fiction? Find out what legendary investor Rick Rule, the director, president, and chairman of Sprout U.S. Holdings, directly asks all CEOs before he invests. To receive a free copy, simply submit your email below so that you may invest with courage and conviction. Welcome to Proven Improbable, where we discover the best mining opportunities for your portfolio. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson, and joining us today is a special guest. He is the president and CEO of Almaden Minerals, which is listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange, AMM, and the New York Stock Exchange, AAU, and also Almadex Minerals, which is listed on the TSX, AMZ, and OTC, AX, DDF, Mr. Morgan Poliquin. How are you doing today, sir? Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me, Maurice. <laughs> it's been quite an endeavor to uh, facilitate this phone call interview here, but I'm, I'm most appreciative of your time. Uh, we last spoke in July at the Sprott uh, Stansbury Conference, and you had a number of developments uh, since then that I want to discuss with you. Um, but before we begin, can you share with the audience the distinction between Almadex and Almaden Minerals, please? Sure. Happy to do so. Essentially, we are prospectors. We, uh, I'm a geological engineer and uh, and an experience in the the realm of uh, exploration and development. But our, our pro we're primarily known for prospecting and making new discoveries. So, um, very happily in 2010, we made a new discovery with our drill rig and have expanded upon that to the point where it's getting very close to a production decision. We have completed engineering studies and. Uh, that we call PEAs, and we're working towards higher level studies from that pre-feasibility and feasibility studies. And so that particular property we call Extaca has advanced to the stage where it's no longer prospecting, clearly. And we felt that uh, that's a little bit of a different business model than, than prospecting. And so therefore, we put all the earlier stage properties uh, the royalties uh, that we've accumulated through our prospecting and, and other assets into a new company called Almadex. And its focus will be, again, uh, early stage prospecting and making the next discovery. Uh, there's lots of reasons why we felt that made sense. And obviously, our shareholders voted uh, for that and, and, and saw that reasoning uh, that I can get into. But uh, the essence of, the, of, the, uh, of why that was done is is simply that there there are different business models and require different uh, uh, putting a mine in production requires a different level of financing uh, and uh, requires a, a different shareholders. Uh, um, it doesn't require different shareholders, but obviously uh, uh, it has different levels of interest uh, in the marketplace. So we felt it it clearly uh, showed what each, uh, rather than us doing everything in the same company, development and early stage exploration, it clearly separated those two things and created some clarity for our shareholders. Absolutely. I think that was a, that's a very uh, a prudent move. In, in sticking with Almadex here, if we may, uh, is it uh, still, is it 20 uh, NSR royalties that you have there? If I'm if I'm correct in that, I think that's what we, we uh, initially went into Almadex and that would still be the same. So yes, um, a nice package of largely early stage royalties, but also there's a royalty on Extaca uh, and on Cabal Blanco, which are development uh, level properties. All right. And the Almadex is still facilitating the prospect generator model. With that being said, um, I always like to share this with the audience. I am a shareholder, and uh, one of the reasons I am so excited and a shareholder of, of both Almadex and Almaden Minerals, respectively, is the prospect generator model. Because one of the things that you have to recall on the prospect generator is, is it has a very tight share structure, and with proven management, such as Morgan Poliquin's and his father, respectively, uh, Dwayne Poliquin, is that you have management that is able to take uh, – and facilitate joint ventures and keep the share tight, the, the share structure tight, and make the company grow and not dilute the shares. And that's very important to understand. And again, that's why I'm so glad that the bifurcation was made with Almaden to focus more spe specifically on the mining aspects of uh, the Exaka project. Um, with that being said, let's switch gears here because I know you really want to talk about. Uh, uh, Almaden Minerals. You have done some phenomenal work behind the scenes, uh, specifically in uh, in October, I believe it was, where you had uh, procured a mill. Is that correct? 
That's right. Um, and if you don't mind, uh, I appreciate, uh, I'd like to talk about that, but just a, a quick um, kind of follow up to your comment about prospect generation. Uh, yes. Uh, my, my view is that uh, we, we take that at face value. Um, you know, when, when my father first uh, started uh, optioning the early stage properties, he identified to other companies to do the expensive exploration. The term didn't exist. So, um, you know, for for us, it was uh, in our group. It was born of necessity, uh, in a sense, and it, it was prudent business. Meaning, um, but but I take the term at face value. We generate our own prospects. Um, that that's the po the point of it. The point of it is not that you do uh, deals at a particular stage uh, before or after drilling. Uh, the key to it all is that you have the capacity to generate your own properties, and certainly that's our skill set uh, demonstrably. We uh, think that the odds of any particular property being a mine are are somewhat long. Um, you know, if it, if 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 there was a hundred percent success rate, uh, everyone would be doing this. So mm -hmm. we can identify areas of great geological potential, but there's no guarantee that uh, each one of the things we, <laughs> uh, in fact, it's guaranteed that uh, uh, you know that the odds are going to be uh, along that any one of these things, despite our geologic acumen, uh, 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 will be an economic mine. So therefore, we think it's prudent. Um, to uh, we can generate more properties than we can possibly drill ourselves to to work with partners who understand those odds uh, but are willing to take them on um, and raise capital to do that. So thereby, uh, we uh, as you mentioned, we we keep our capital structure intact uh, by not needing to finance the drilling of every property. But that being said, we've found a way to do early stage drilling ourselves uh, without um, uh, significant dilution by owning our own drills. So we're able to drill far uh, uh, cheaper than than commercial rates of drilling that way. Uh, so all in all, our, our model is to uh, do the early stage prospecting, which is very cheap. It's not a it's not a, a money amount. It's a it's an intellectual capital you're spending, which we have uh, in abundance with respect to prospecting. And then subsequently, it's um, it's keeping the capital costs low through being able to drill. So. So that's our approach. Um, sorry to digress, but I, I, no. I thought that might be a, a good opportunity. No, very well said, sir. Very well said. I, I'm glad you uh, shared that with the audience. And, and with that being said as well, again, even though you had the bifurcation, the proprietary and intellectual capital is still intact uh, with Almadex. Uh, that's right. That was part of the metric there is that uh, – you know, we don't know what the ultimate outcome will be with respect to the Extaca property. Uh, obviously, properties at that uh, level of uh, of development often uh, are of interest to mining companies. Uh, that should be obvious. Uh, and so, uh, alternatively, if if Almadem were to build out, uh, you know, a mine production team, uh, if that were an option. F for us, we would obviously there would be dilution in, involved. So, mm -hmm. um, the intellectual capital with respect to the prospecting, uh, the drills, uh, all the knowledge of Eastern Mexico, that all went into Almadex, and and as you say, is intact for for shareholders there, as well as a royalty on the Extaca uh, project. So the Almadex uh, shareholders are exposed to the upside there as well, and uh, it leaves Almaden to focus on the development and. Uh, um, of the extaca deposit, which is what you, before I so rudely interrupted you, <laughs> was <laughs> your next question. And if uh, I can jump in and answer that quickly, uh, uh, it's not, um, it's hard to distill the years of work really uh, succinctly. But um, what what we recognized is we're obviously in a very bad market, um, and it's it's hard to see the opportunities. Uh, because the the negatives of being in a very uh, a descending metal price environment and sentiment um, environment with respect to mining investment, it, the negatives are obvious. Uh, but the positives are harder to see. And we've been around for a long time, and I think um, by virtue of the fact our chairman uh, is very active and has been around for 50 years in this business, my father, um, that leadership, uh, you know, and that experience. Uh, is very helpful in, in looking for the opportunities. We thought that buying a used mill made very good sense um, to reduce the capital cost. It was the largest component of the capital cost in our uh, PEA of last year. 
So we were able to found a, find a mill that went into bankruptcy subsequent to the crash of 2008. It's not it's used, but it was only used for six weeks. So it's uh, recently refurbished or or brand new equipment and um, in excellent shape, obviously. So we were able to secure an option to purchase that mill. The mine was put in production uh, for 250 million, I believe, and the mill in stage payments we were able to secure for six and a half million dollars. So it dramatically reduces the capital costs for the Extaca deposit and its development and enabled us to put out a new PEA, which uh, accounted for uh, this, uh, uh, what we call the Rock Creek Mill that we secured. And it, it shows obviously uh, great capital savings and um, you know that, that the deposit can work uh, in, in this price environment. Uh, uh, at the same time, we've done a lot of detailed engineering and, and we've come up with a a smaller mine plan than we originally had at higher metal prices, but um, one that uh, again uh, works in in this environment and can certainly expand into the larger metal, uh, uh, higher metal price, larger mine plan that we have previously uh, uh, talked about in earlier P PEAs. So, uh, so that's kind of what we've been doing over the last year, and and we put out a series of new re news releases over the last couple of months here, uh, culminating in the updated PEA, which we released uh, just uh, um, 10 days ago, I believe. It, yes, it was. It was roughly 10 days ago because you had two that were conducted uh, back in April and September of 2014. And with the mill, you drastically had uh, reduced the, uh, the capital expenditures required, as you alluded to earlier. So I know a lot of shareholders, including myself, were elated to see the uh, numbers of the acquisition of that mill. <laughs> kudos, kudos to you there. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Um, um, you know, it's uh, it's a difficult environment, but uh, we're you know, our mandate from our shareholders is to obviously uh, uh, be cautious and careful and not do anything imprudent um, because we don't know how long this bad market will uh, will uh, will last. But our but our our clear mandate is to advance the project and add value, and uh, um, w that's what we've been uh, t uh, trying to do here. And for the audience, I you know I, I do apologize. Uh, we mentioned the Extaca uh, uh, project, but we didn't mention where it was located. Would you mind sharing exactly where it's located? And uh, also, if there's any reversionary interest, because the property is 100% owned, is that correct? Well, it's 100% owned, uh, but it is subject to a royalty that Almadex now holds. Yes. So uh, so that's the only uh, uh, underlying interest, uh, which uh, was created as part of the spin-out. Uh, it's located uh, about a three-hour drive uh, east of Mexico City, it's uh, in in uh, uh, the state of Puebla. It's uh, located in what Almadex calls uh, eastern our, our eastern Mexico belt. Uh, we know more about the geology of the belt, arguably, than anybody. Uh, I did my PhD on it, uh, and we feel that we've pioneered a, a whole new. Um, terrain uh, in terms of the geologic opportunity, which was unknown before we came. Uh, the Caballo Blanco project, which we acquired in, in the mid-90s, was our first project, and it's uh, developed into a nice gold deposit. That was the first discovery in this belt, and the second is Extaca, and most of the properties uh, in Almadex that we have been speaking about uh, are, are in that belt, and obviously a tremendous amount of intellectual capital in that belt as well so we feel that uh, we're just getting going there and uh, but that's that's where the project is located it has a uh, highway most of the way paved road all the way to the Extaca deposit uh, and it's located about 20 kilometers from an industrial park uh, where Kimberly Clark is uh, uh, has a large manufacturing facility it's about an hour and a half drive away from one of the largest Volkswagen plants in the world in Puebla and there's a new Audi plant being built next to it so it's in a developed part of Mexico um, uh, but at the same time it's not uh, the immediate area is not uh, what we would call sensitive uh, it um, um, for example all the trees have already been cleared there's no parks or uh, pres preservation areas or anything uh, like that. So it's got a very good location for developing a deposit. And um, um, 
However, it is in a new area of Mexico that uh, where there aren't a lot of existing metal mines uh, by virtue of the fact of this uh, grassroots exploration we've done, we've discovered a new area. Very well said. The reversion interest that you mentioned earlier, I believe that is a 2.5%, is it not uh, for the uh, 2% Omadex? 2% NSR, uh, yes. 2%. 2%, okay. And are we looking at open pit on this one as well? Yes, uh, the uh, existing uh, the, the new PEA we just released contemplates an open pit, uh, and uh, the the gold silver ore would be um, in that mine plan would be um, uh, milled, and uh, uh, a gold silver uh, product would be created on site called Dore. So it's a pretty straightforward conventional type of mining scenario. All right. If you would briefly, and just to, just to share with shareholders, because I think sometimes they don't understand the price difference with an open pit versus having to actually drill in the ground. I don't. I think sometimes uh, prospective shareholders specifically, um, they don't understand the difference in the costs or the capex that's required for that. Uh, can you just briefly just touch on that, if you would? Sure. Um, you know, these are these are just uh, not specific and and should be taken. Uh, uh, as general comments, of course, but in general, uh, open pit mining is is usually about two dollars a ton or so to to move dirt, um, whereas underground mining uh, is anywhere from twenty five dollars at a at, at the lowest uh, through to uh, eighty dollars and up a ton uh, to to mine a ton of rock, and the reasons for it are that uh, um, underground mining requires uh, a lot of tunneling to get where you're going and um, on surface you can use very large equipment uh, large trucks everyone's familiar with the enormous scale of the shovels and the trucks that are in open pit mines today so there's a tremendous amount of efficiency in open pit mining so at a minimum uh, open pit mining is uh, 10 times cheaper per ton of rock than an open pit mine um, than an underground mine, rather. So, um, yeah, and you're right. There could be a large capital expenditure involved. There can be very large capital expenditures involved in starting open pit mines as well, mind you. But usually, underground mines involve a lot of tunneling first to get where you where you're going. Um, and tunneling itself is very expensive. And of course, a tunnel you can't put a very large dump truck in a tunnel. So, for those reasons, um, underground mining. Is generally speaking a lot more expensive than open pit mining. If if your if your mineralization is very deep, obviously you can't uh, uh, too deep to contemplate open pit mining. Uh, then you have to mine underground, and so usually underground mines uh, require much higher uh, grades or concentrations of of metal to be economic than open pit mines. 